Welcome to Module 7, Safety First. Now, I have to preface this with that it's not to get you paranoid about things, but just to be aware, because you're going to look at some of the things I'm going to show you and wonder, oh my gosh, you know, is Big Brother watching me? And you know what, you have to kind of take your own advice on that. I'm not sure about Big Brother, but we are going to go over uh, parental controls, which I just feel I need to show you how you can do that if you need to. And a lot about privacy, um, as well as passwords, find your iPhone and iPad, an awesome, awesome app. Find your friends, might be good if you have a teen, and a little bit about safety and texting. Oh, kids look so cute. What could they possibly do to harm your iPad? <laughs> I'm going to show you something on the next slide, and you can kind of do it or not. Um, but you know they can get into things and mess up your email uh, so just be aware of this option that Apple has provided so consider turning on parental controls by enabling restrictions and I really am very high on the consider part I don't think it's very good I wish that one day Apple would just give you the ability to create your own logon for your child and give them access to what you want. And I look every release to see if this happens. So far, no go. <laughs> it's not ideal how they're, they do this, but you will have to decide whether you want to or not. And you'll have to do more research. I'm just going to show you where the setting is. So you go to Settings, and then General, Restrictions, and this is where you can decide what to do, enable or disable, and really play around with it. I've put a link below that you can check out more information from the support site on Apple. But it's uh, an example would be that if you turn off Safari here, then you go back out, the icon for Safari is gone. So you have to figure out if that's really what you want. So play around with it, see if it works for how you want to protect your iPad. And remember that if you ever can't find something later on, perhaps you turned it on in parental controls and just have to go back in and enable it. So you don't want to rack up charges uh, well, your child. <laughs> you don't want your child racking up charges on your device. So here's some options you got to kind of understand. So this one removes the actual App Store icon. Okay, so they won't be able to go into the App Store and buy any app, but you have to re-enable this if you want to go in. This one removes the ability to delete something, so that's good if you uh, have a child that likes to play around and accidentally deletes apps that you use, so you, they will no longer have that ability, but again, you have to re-enable this if you want to delete it. Some apps offer in-app purchases and you don't want your kids racking up charges, okay? So you have to really understand how this works. When it's turned off, any attempt to purchase something within an app will be met with a dialog box like this that says in-app purchases are not allowed. In this particular game, I was trying to purchase more coins and it wouldn't let me because the in-app purchases was, wasn't on. The last thing I would consider, it's always a good idea to be prompted for a password. And if you change this to immediate, then you don't have to worry about that in-between time, that if it's uh, the other option is 15 minutes, that your little guy might go in and do some damage to uh, purchases. <laughs> okay, So make note of all those, and hopefully that will uh, have a little bit of a less of an impact on your credit card and your wallet. I'd like to actually thank Ian Schur from the Wall Street Journal for simplifying the explanation on all this privacy stuff. I started re doing research for this when Apple made some changes and there's so much information about it out there and I've put some links below so check them out but uh, he really simplified it I think. So you actually can within Safari have a private browsing session. So. In the past, uh, you had to go through a series of jumps and hurdles to toggle to private browsing, and that feature shields your online surfing habits. So now, with the new iOS 7, customers or users, you, can actually open up a single window in private browsing mode and see the article below called Avoiding Pri Prying Eyes. It explains it in more detail if you're interested. So when using private browsing, 
The device won't remember your search history or pages you visit and won't automatically fill in any fields. So here's a good example. If you share your iPad with your spouse and you're tr looking on there for a Christmas present and you don't want them to see what you're looking for, then when they go back in it won't be in the history or anything. So that might be one reason to know how to do this. So you can open up a new tab and access private browsing by doing this. Okay. So I'm in Safari, so you open up Safari and up at the top right you click on the plus and then you click on private and it will ask you would you like to close your existing tabs before turning on private browsing you decide what you want to do once you figure that out then you can browse away and not be worried about being tracked you can also have do not track on globally on safari and how you would do that is that you go to settings, you go to Safari, and you turn on the do not track. Did you know that advertisers can track your info to offer you better ads? Okay, that might be good, because if you, for example, you download a bunch of golfing apps, you might start seeing ads for nearby courses. And did you also know that each iPad has a unique tracking number? Uh, are you scared? I'm going to show you what you can do. So you can reduce advertisers from targeting you by going to settings, privacy, scroll to the bottom where it says advertising, and then turn on limit ad tracking. So turn it to green. Now this is verbatim what Apple says about ad tracking if you turn this on. You may see the same number of ads as before, however they may be less relevant because you they won't be based on your interest. You may see ads related to the content in an application or based on other non-personal information. I'll leave it for you to decide what you want to do about this. There's also something called frequent locations. Uh, people can opt out of location tracking feature of Apple's mapping software. The device will collect information and create a map of frequently visited places. Now Apple says in iOS 7 software that such data is anonymous and only used to improve its mapping software. You can decide for yourself and you can opt out at any time. I'm just going to show you where those settings are. So you go to settings, privacy, location services, scroll down to the bottom, and select system services and you can turn location based ads on or off here. Okay so here's the question for you. Do you have a password on your overall device? That means it locks after so many minutes of inactivity and you uh, have to type in your password you get kudos if you say yes. Now, obviously you don't have to put a password on your device. My feeling is that you should. They're like mini computers, so if you have a password on your computer, you should probably have a password on your iPad or iPhone or any other device that you have. So, you may or may not do this. Bypass it if you want. I do highly suggest you protect your information and your client's information by putting a password on your device. Now here's the thing about this, you will hate it when you first start doing this because it will lock after so many minutes of inactivity. However, trust me on this as well, you will totally get used to it and know that when you pick it up you'll have to put your password in. I do it on every single device I own and I just know when I pick it up, enter the password. So let's see, hopefully you'll do it. So there are two different types of passcodes that you can use. And passcodes are Apple's version of passwords. They've just renamed it. So <laughs> you can either have a simple passcode, which is four numbers long, or you can turn passcode on, which will give you the ability to use a longer passcode that's either alpha numeric characters or just letters. Let me show you how. So go to Settings then General, Passcode Lock, and then this is where you have an option to have the four digit password, four numbers, and you can turn that on here, and then click on Turn Passcode On, or 
you can actually if you don't want that don't turn it on just click on turn passcode on and it'll ask you either way you do it to enter your password twice so you know what you're actually typing there's also a feature called auto lock and auto lock is a you get a little confused about passcode lock and auto lock so auto lock is the phone turning itself off after a period of inactivity passcode lock is putting a passcode on the device if you look in settings you'll see that they're treated completely separately and let me show you how to enable auto lock if you're doing it from here just click on the general at the top if you hit general from the last slide you'll see auto lock on the right hand side if you're starting from the beginning what you do is you go to settings general and auto lock then you can actually choose how many minutes of inactivity your device will take before it locks so I have mine set here for 15 minutes so you have a lost or stolen iPad and Apple has a great app called find my iPhone or iPad you do have to enable iCloud so I want to have a quick chat about what iCloud is so it's a suite of services that lets you back up your device, synchronize your device with other iDevices or computers, so Apple stuff, and you can store data up to 5 gig free, and of course you can always buy more with a paid subscription. So part of the issue might be for federal government, doctors, lawyers, and some others that may need to avoid the use of iCloud as it's illegal to store information on servers not located on Canadian soil. That's if you're Canadian. If you're American, it doesn't matter, or it may not matter. For iCloud to work properly, you will need to enable it on each device you intend to use it on, and then you receive an email from Apple to assist you in setting it up uh, on your computer. You do need to have an Apple ID and a password is required. So Find My iPad can help you locate and secure your iPad if it's lost or stolen by signing into www.icloud.com. Activation lock is enabled automatically when you turn on Find My iPad and that can help deter theft by requiring your Apple ID and password before anyone can erase or reactivate your iPad. That's so helpful if it's stolen. However, not so helpful if you're selling it or giving it away. So the next slide I'll actually show you how to do that. How to enable Find My iPad? Well, you go to Settings, iCloud, enable Find My iPad, so make it green, and it may ask you for your Apple ID or password or to set it up. Now, what's important here is if when you turn this on, is iPad must be able to connect to the internet for you to locate and secure the device. So that makes sense, right? So if you have a device that has a SIM card in it and it's on, no problem, but if you have a Wi-Fi only, it might be a little bit of an issue trying to track down your device. Now one further thing I want to mention, I just want to tell you I'm not a huge fan of iCloud, as it really does confuse people. You see in the demo here that this is actually mine. It doesn't show mail, contacts, calendar, reminders turned on because mine automatically does it when I set it up. It has something called Active Sync in the back and everything completely syncs wirelessly. So if you're having problems with yours where you have duplicate contacts or duplicate calendar entries, try and turn that setting off here and see if that fixes your duplicate issues. You can also look below for more tips about passcodes and passwords about Find My iPad and the links are actually there to download it if it's not on your device already. So if you do want to give away or sell your iPad before you do it, be sure to erase all the content and all your personal information. So if you've enabled Find My iPad, you need to turn off activation lock before the new owner can activate the iPad under his own account. So go to Settings, General, Reset, and erase all contents and content and settings. Now the receiver of your iPad will have no problem setting it up. Okay, so first you have to go to iCloud.com and then I'm going to sign in with my iCloud ID. 
hit enter. 